Instructions. Consume on an empty stomach. Beginners can start with half or one square. Half or one square. <laughs> I'm eating the whole thing. It smells like bad feet mixed with sour milk. Yeah, there's, there's no expiration date on it. Oh, great. What have I gotten into? It smells awful, man. That was one of the strongest, if not the strongest mushroom trip I've ever had in my life. Welcome back to Psyched Substance. In today's episode, we are going to be doing something that I have never done before. We are going to be exploring the world as in eating mushroom infused chocolates. Now, before we get started, I have to make it absolutely clear that I do not recommend that anybody watching tries anything. Psilocybin mushrooms are currently in the process of becoming much more accepted socially, especially when you watch movies like Fantastic Fungi, which really highlights a lot of the benefits in a way that I really am never going to be able to encompass in a simple YouTube video. That's not to say there's not a whole slew of risks involved, which is why I can't personally recommend anybody tries this. We are simply filming this video for the sake of documentary purposes and to see what happens when someone consumes mushroom chocolate. These products are becoming a lot more common these days, meaning it's time that I do a safety video um, on it to show you guys how to do it properly if you're going to do it. Again, I don't recommend anybody does it, but through this video, hopefully you learn how to do it properly, how to do it safely, and what to do in case something, uh, you know, horrible happens, like a potential bad trip. According to YouTube guidelines shown here, videos which intend to educate are documentary by nature and do not glorify the use of drugs. Those abide by the community safety guidelines and are eligible for monetization. The following video does not glorify the use of drugs. Instead, attempts to be unbiased while delivering life-saving information disguised as entertainment. Now, before we get started, I'm going to explain to you guys the materials that you need in order to have the most safe experience possible. Of course, again, not to sound like a broken record, but the best way of, well, the best form of harm reduction is quite actually abstinence, meaning just don't take the damn compound, which is what I am recommending. But again, if you are going to do so anyway, I'm going to explain and demonstrate how to do so in a safe way so you don't hurt yourself. Now, this is not going to be an exhaustive list. I have several how-to psychedelic videos that I'm going to link in the video description that you can watch if you want a detailed list on how to do so safely but just to briefly cover it here to make this a complete safety guide we're going to cover the essentials the first thing you're going to need is a proper good set and setting your set meaning how you feel where you are in your life your current mental space what your thoughts are like and the setting being exactly what it sounds like where you are having your experience a lot of people think that mushrooms are going to be fantastic when eaten in nature which i agree that's probably the ideal place to take them but what a lot of people don't realize is that's probably not an area that you want to be in until you have some experience under your belt. The best place to start is in the comfort of your own home. You want to be able to control as many aspects of the experience as possible, which is ironic to say considering the very act of taking the psychedelic is kind of surrendering control. And that's how you have a good experience is the more you're able to surrender that control. But you want to be able to control things like, you know, the temperature, the music, who's around you. Sometimes just hearing bad sounds or hearing negative people can be enough to cause your experience to take a bad turn, especially if you are new. All of the guidelines I'm pointing out are directed at people who are new, who aren't yet confident in their abilities to, you know, just hold it together and keep a positive mindset. So if you are new, you want to be in your home, ideally, and you want to be with someone that you trust and ideally love, someone you care about. You want to be with someone who you can actually be your naked self with without having to put on a facade because if you're with a friend that even if you're good friends but you guys still kind of are in that relationship where you're putting on a bit of an act to uh, I don't know get validation from each other on a psychedelic that act is going to crumble and fall to pieces and it's going to show you very quickly who your real friends are and if you aren't close with the person you're with it can oh it can bring to light a slew of potential negative consequences. So now, assuming you've got set and setting under control, the next thing you want to do is make sure that you got some headphones and a playlist ready, not just for enjoyment, but you want to have a relaxing playlist already picked out in case the experience takes some scary turns. And these experiences, they're not all scary usually and they're not all positive. It takes you on a ride. Like it really is like going up a roller coaster. There's that anxious phase where you're going up, up, up. And then there's that excitement when you finally drop and go through the first like whoosh 
and then your belly shoots up and you feel like you can't breathe for a minute and then there's a bit of anxiety when you do that first loop thrust around you're doing the turns and bends it's a ride and it takes you on a journey which is why for the parts of the journey that could be a little challenging it's good to have music that can help calm you down and you know reconnect you with your breath next shameless plug you're going to want to have a soft trip blanket you don't really need a blanket. You just need to have very comfortable, warm clothes on because some of these psychedelics can cause your body to no longer regulate its temperature properly. More often than not, it's gonna result in you feeling cold rather than warm and everybody likes to be cozy when they're tripping. This is actually our new pink and black, I'm gonna open it for you guys, trip blankets that we have finally gotten in stock. Ever since you guys saw them in the video I did with Lauren, where uh, Lauren was like, I would totally wear one of those. And I was like, I think it's hideous. You guys have been asking for it. And you know what? It's not that ugly. I actually, I, I like the design. It's nice to have something that's black, but just look at how silky this thing looks. I mean, oh, it's such a soft item. Look at this thing. This is great. And, you know, we've got our pockets here with buttons that you can store stuff in. So you can actually wear this on your head and move around because, you know, it has pockets that double as mitts if you really want to stay warm. Obviously, you don't need my trip blanket to have a positive experience, but you want some cozy clothes and some cozy blankets nearby so that, you know, you can snuggle up because everybody likes to be snuggled in a warm, cozy blanket, especially during these intense experiences. It just, you know, it reminds you of the womb. It takes you way back to before you even existed outside of a sack of fluid. Like it's, um, yeah, it's a nice experience, really. Anyway, you can pick up one of these trip blankets by visiting the link to psychedsubstance.com shop. Next, this is a controversial item, but I believe you want to have an escape rope. Like you're playing Pokemon and you went into that dungeon and uh, the Zubats finally got you. They drained all your blood and you're like, shit, I just lost some of my money as I scurried off to the nearest Pokemon Center. I really just wish I had that escape rope so I could have just escaped out and healed my guys when I had the chance. And for that, you're going to use a benzodiazepine. Now there are other chemical compounds that can be used as trip killers. Antipsychotic medication works too, but benzos are really the most easily accessible by most people. For example, if you were presented to the emergency room with a symptoms of psychosis due to having, you know, a bad acid or bad mushroom trip, one of the first things they do is they would give you a benzodiazepine, most likely diazepam, to help calm you down. Now what I have here is Alprazolam, and you can really use any of them. You can use clonazepam, you can use lorazepam. Um, there's a whole slew of benzodiazepines that can be administered as trip killers. Now these are uh, generic Xanax bars. And uh, if you're using Xanax as a trip killer, you don't want the whole bar. Unless you have some kind of tolerance, that's huge. You can successfully kill a trip with just one of these little blocks. So one fourth of this is enough to kill a trip. I'm all about using the smallest efficacious dose. You also have to be careful. You don't want to combine this with something like alcohol or opioids because that can cause respiratory depression and, um, well, kill you. So this is something that you're only going to want to take assuming that you're just on a psychedelic and, you know, you're not smashed or high out of your mind on like oxys or something when you're taking the trip killer. So just keep that in mind, very important. But assuming all you did was say, take some mushrooms, um, what you would do is say you're experiencing symptoms of a bad trip, your thoughts start to raise, you get really paranoid. Say you try meditating for a bit, you try focusing on your breath and nothing works, you're just getting more and more panicky, panicky, panicky. Then what you would do is, as I said, you would take the lowest effective dose, you would chew it, so you want to dissolve it under your tongue so it comes on as fast as possible, and then if it's something like uh, Alprazolam, it, within 10-15 minutes, you're going to calm down. In fact, some people experience an instant calm down. It's kind of like that anticipation. They're anticipating that it's going to relax them, so as soon as they administer it, all of a sudden they take that deep breath and they're like, oh, I feel better now. And in fact, the benzo hasn't even come close to hitting. Often I find just knowing that you have something like this on hand is enough to thwart bad trips. It's better to be safe than sorry. There's a whole group of people who say that it's best to ride out the trips and there's no such thing as a bad trip and the bad experiences teach you the most. And while that is 100% accurate, there are instances where people have a bad mushroom or acid trip and they go and fucking kill themselves. So in that instance, wouldn't it have been better to just kill the trip? That's why I like the trip killers because they do exactly what they're supposed to. They work, they end a trip, which is important, especially if you're new to this, because some people, they read, you know, and they watch these videos and they have these expectations as to what's going to happen, but expectations don't mirror reality. And these experiences, as I'm sure you've heard, often 
elude language. They move beyond the realm of being describable with human words. And not everyone's ready for those kinds of experiences. So you really want to be cautious. And that's the next point is always start with the lowest effective dose. And when it comes to psilocybin mushrooms, a good first timer experience would be one to two grams. I know a lot of you guys that sounds like an abysmal amount, like that's nothing. But if you've never tripped before, you just you really want to start, I think, by getting your feet wet. Now, it's not going to really reach a true trip until you hit, you know, the three to four gram mark, depending on potency. But um, at least with one to two grams, you're kind of like one foot in, one foot out. And if it's if it's not for you, you're going to know really soon. What's really important is just don't push things too far. For a first experience, I would not go above four grams, like four is going to be, yeah, the upper end of a first trip when it comes to mushrooms. For other compounds, well, we'll talk about that in videos that are based on other compounds. You just really want to practice safe use and go easy on yourself because you can always take more, but you can never take less. Anyway, there, there's a lot that I could be talking about. There's so much safety information, but um, let's move on to the next part of the video. This is the exciting part where we eat the chocolates. And I want to point out that, uh, where I live, just because you can easily obtain this, there's so many different brands of chocolate that you can get. This is the one I'm going to be eating in this video, but I've also got these big ass bars. And then I got this, this huge one. Yeah, when it comes to choosing to eat this one, I'm trying to, you know, work out and get fit here. And I'm trying to watch the calorie intake. So like, if I can get the exact same amount of psilocybin from the small bar, instead of having to sit here and eat this legitimate, huge, delicious chocolate bar, I'm gonna go with the small one, but I will show you what these guys look like because I got an open one here that um, I've been using for microdosing. Look at how delicious this looks. Oh, oh, it's actually tempting to sit here and eat one of these delicious bars. Like it tastes like a legitimate, amazing chocolate bar. Like it's dangerous, actually dangerous because it's so good. You could just sit here and before you know it, you've eaten the whole three gram bar when you wanted to microdose and you're, uh, before you know it, you're in a full trip. You can like, you can barely taste the mushrooms in these. I don't know how they did it. Freaking good, man. But um, yeah, let's get on with uh, eating our our bar. It's it's called Brainstorm. Vibin with psilocybin, boom bar. Hand curated psilocybin edibles. Lab tested with the Canadian flag there. Oh baby. Uh, let's read this. It says, ingredients, 3,500 milligrams dried psilocybin mushrooms. I wish it told you which kind. I'm assuming it's just cubensis because that's the most common. Probably something like B-positive or golden teachers. But I, you know, I'm a stickler for the details. I would love to know the kind. It says milk chocolate, unsweetened chocolate, uh, sugar, cocoa butter, whole milk powder, natural vanilla flavor, soy lectin, salt, may contain nuts, milk, and soy, processed in a plant that contains peanuts, other tree nuts, sulfites, and... Tartrazine. I would love to know what other products are made in the plant that makes the psilocybin chocolate. Instructions. Consume on an empty stomach. Beginners can start with half or one square. Half or one square. <laughs> I'm eating the whole thing. Wait 30 minutes for effect before consuming additional squares. Store in a cool, dry place. Warning. Do not operate motor vehicle or heavy equipment. Do not take of pregnant or breastfeeding. Keep out of the reach of children and pets. One full bar is 224 grams. 120 calories, 8 grams of fat, 10.4 grams of carbs, 2 grams of fiber, uh, 6.4, you know, sugars, 1.2 grams of protein, and 4% uh, of your daily calcium intake, and 8% of your daily iron intake. I'm low in iron, so there we go. I'm taking this for the iron, baby. Anyway, um, my, my stomach, or my bowels are preemptively evacuating. Whenever I take a psychedelic, I have to poo, and oh my god, I haven't even tried it yet, but I find that, like, sometimes I'll preemptively poo. One second. All right, now before we get started, I do want to point out that psilocybin isn't legal all across Canada. However, there are some places in Canada where you can buy this stuff and um, the government is aware of it and they just don't care. It's kind of like what happened with cannabis, where in the beginning, before cannabis became legal, you could buy cannabis at certain places, the government knew about it, they didn't stop it, and then soon after that, cannabis became legal. Something very similar is happening with mushrooms. They know that pe people are selling them in the form of chocolate bars, they're not stopping it. The next course of action is likely it's going to be legal. I mean, this is what happens. The people dictate what compounds come next. And it's because people are showing such an interest in psilocybin these days. And the people are basically saying, look, man, we know it's not dangerous. No one's ever died from eating too many mushrooms, not from overdose, at least like psychological reasons. Sure. But no one's died from like, you know, just eating too much and, uh, you know, their heart stopping or anything like that. And uh, the people 
are beginning to realize that there is a lot of medicinal benefits to these compounds when they're used safely and in the proper way. And then there's certain states where they've actually decriminalized or maybe even legalized psilocybin. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting time we're living in. A lot of people like to say how terrible these times are, but there's also progress happening. Stuff like this becoming readily available in many places, this is progress because this kind of thing can heal so many people as long as they know how to do it safely, which is why I create these videos. Anyway, enough of me freaking blabbering. Let's, let's open this bad boy and get a look at her. Oh, okay. Kind of broke a little bit there. Got some ASMR as we open this. It has a funny smell, okay? So so that other chocolate was is delicious. This thing, we'll just pretend it's together, just looks like a plain, boring chocolate bar. And it smells like... It actually smells like sour feet. It smells like bad feet mixed with sour milk. Yeah, yeah. Shit. I think this might have gone bad. I don't... There's, there's no expiration date on it. Oh, great. What have I gotten into? I either eat this sour milk one or I got to down one of these giant bars. All right. I'm not eating a whole bar. Okay. That's just not happening right now. looks like it's the sour milk for me. Oh, oh boy. Oh, the moment of truth. It smells awful, man. It really smells disgusting. Oh. oh, oh my God. Oh, I'm gonna vomit. Oh my God. Oh. I can't do it. Either this is turned or um, the process they use to make this is absolutely fucking disgusting. There's no way in hell I'm eating this. Oh God, that was so gross. Oh, I'd rather just eat the raw mushrooms. That was so freaking gross. So this, this passion fruit one contains three grams of blue goba penis envy. In case you guys don't know, it's about twice as potent as traditional psilocybin mushrooms. So this bar would be like six, maybe even more grams worth. This would be a freaking ride. And look how beautiful it is. They use legitimate gold in making this. This is wild. This actually looks delicious. And as you can see, I've tried a few pieces for a microdose already of this one. Pretty good. It, it tastes awesome. But we're not we're not going to be doing the Blue Goba Penis Envy trip today. That's super intense. We'll maybe do that one another time. So what we are going to do is we're going to do the three gram. I'm going to eat this entire bar. God damn my calorie intake. This entire bar of matcha cha-cha chocolate and that's going to be three grams total of psilocybe cubensis so yeah let's let's uh let's get going huh i like the little message in there it says keep growing okay we will keep growing Ooh, look at this this looks tasty these bars look amazing Oh, yum. Look at this bar. Oh, they do a really good job, these guys. All right. You guys saw what happened with, um, oh, oh, this, this is garbage. I know there's going to be like, comments, send it to me. Um, no, that's not legal. But uh, this is disgusting. We'll never, ever be touching that again. Um, let's taste this guy. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes like real chocolate. Mm. That was good. You know what, actually, you know what I think I'll do? Screw that. We're going to eat. We're going to go for the penis envy, too. Yeah, I got a good feeling about this. 
We can try some of each. So we're gonna do one line of this. Let's try the gold of the penis envy. We'll do one line of this one. Mmm. Oh, that's way better. Oh, this passion fruit is delicious. You would never guess that there's mushrooms in this versus this one. Oh, oh so bad. So there we go. So we did one row of that, and then I'm going to do a total of three rows of this one, which, um, considering that's penis envy, is going to give us the equivalent of three grams. Wait, no. For the equivalent of three grams, we need one more piece. There we go. Let's get this right. There we go. I know I'm making it more complicated. I could have just done this whole bar, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit. Why not? So let's do a mix of psilocybe cubensis and penis envy to show you guys just how crazy strong penis envy is. To be honest, that's probably the equivalent of a little bit more than three grams of cubes. But um, yeah, I just wanted to try the taste, which is really good. Imagine this is like all just some excuse so I can eat chocolate because like I don't eat milk, right? And I try not to eat sugar and I'm really strict with my diet. So wouldn't it be hilarious? It's like in the back of my head. I'm subconsciously rationalizing eating mushroom chocolate as like, hmm, I get to cheat on my diet and have some chocolate today. So honestly, this is a lot of chocolate to eat. Like, for someone who doesn't eat chocolate ever, after the first row, I was done. Now I'm kind of just forcing it, forcing it down. It's real sweet. Let's see what the calories are of these as I finish this off. Oh, last bite, best bite, baby. Mmm, down the hatch. Oh shoot, I was wrong. So the, the blue goba has a average tryptamine content of 2.115 and the cubes average between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. That's more than twice as potent. So I just had potentially the equivalent of like 3.5 grams, oh boy. Anyway, aside, we got my headphones ready. God forbid we got the trip killers, just in case. Now, something that I like to do um, before these experiences hit is, uh, you know, a quick meditation. When you focus on your breathing and you breathe rhythmically and slow, it relaxes the nervous system. Like it has a, a true physiological effect on the body, which causes you to feel more relaxed and centered. So it's a great way to enter these experiences. So let's um, just bear with me while I do that. Oh, before I forget, you also want to have intention. How did I miss that? Intention is huge. And I'm going to set an intention for this experience right now. I personally like using psychedelics as tools to help heal aspects of my life that, well, I'm struggling with, that need fixing. And right now, even though I'm doing the hormone therapy and all that stuff, I still wanna be off the kratom. So I'm gonna put that out into the universe. Don't mind me while I sound like a raging hippie for a moment. I am putting out the intention that this experience is going to shine a light on, you know, just why I am still on the Kratom train and it's going to show me how to move through it. Yeah, just experience life, maybe even drug free, just being me. That would be ideal. And let's see if the mushrooms um, can give me what I asked for. Often you, you don't get the experience that you ask for. You, you get the experience that you need. Maybe that's what I need, maybe it's not, but at least I'm putting it out into the universe and let's see if it delivers. Wouldn't it be really crazy if after this experience, I actually stopped drinking Kratom. I went on the hormone therapy, I've done all these crazy things and all I really need to do was eat some gosh darn mushroom chocolate. I, I'm just speculating, right? This It's currently too early on to see if that'll actually happen, but let's throw it out there and let's see if it happens. I will tell you guys this, I will be completely honest in the outcome. If this trip has absolutely no, no effect whatsoever on uh, me wanting to take Kratom daily, I'll let you know. I'll tell you that my Kratom intake didn't change and I'm not gonna try to force myself to lower the intake just to artificially impregnate this experience with the child of growth. Like, no, 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 that baby can just go F off if he's not made from authentic, legitimate causes. We want him to be a natural birth, not forced. So what I'm gonna do is uh, let the, the dice land where it lands and we'll read the numbers as they roll and we'll see what, I, what we get. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just gonna see what happens. Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm talking so much, it's because I haven't decided if I'm going to just cut to the effects or if I'm gonna make this video one of those where it's like, I'm filming the whole come up. I might do two, you know what? That's a good idea, let's do two. Uh, and these filming the come up 
videos are way better when I have a co-host and we can like, you know, podcast style it up. Imagine it was a Derek as they're waiting for the effects. <laughs> Imagine if Derek was here. <laughs> like my podcast with more plates, uh, more plates, more dates.com. Mr. Mr. Deltoid master Derek himself. That would be hilarious. I'm starting to, the lights are, are starting to slowly but surely get brighter. Oh, that's usually one of the first signs for me is everything just starts looking really, really bright and then vivid. So let's do that meditation now. Judging by how fast everything is starting to look like DMT world, you know that was strong. <sighs> Especially the initial feeling and visuals of mushrooms, I find remarkably similar to DMT. This shirt's feeling too tight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling cold. Definitely already feel cold. my eyes closed this is exactly like a DMT trip there's no difference the visuals I'm getting with my eyes closed even open so similar if, if you told me that I just smoked like 25 30 milligrams of DMT I would not argue entire body is warm vibrating and with eyes closed I'm taking I'm taking through spinning morphing geometry of these like red red black tunnels feels like I'm going through wormholes No buzzing in my ears, though. Um, the next stage of this, like the intensity, just gets to a point where I just like this is anything like DMT, where I just need to close my eyes and pass out. And these cameras are gonna run out of juice soon. I'm gonna pause them and go lay down. But I'm just telling you, that's all I'm doing is laying down. Um, this has gotten mega intense, mega fast, like the room is starting to morph into something else. All right, seven hours later, I am completely back. I gotta say one thing. These chocolate bars are bullshit. That was like a flat out lie. That was no three, three to three and a half grams. That felt closer to, I don't know, five, six, seven. 
That was at least five grams worth. I was straight blasted into hallucinatory uh, states, which quickly transitioned into um, basically crossing over into DMT world with supreme intensity. That was one of the strongest mushroom experiences, if not the strongest mushroom trip I've ever had in my fucking life. The chocolates are a lie. Claiming three grams a bar, no, 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 no. If it is, this is some potent shit. They are dosing people way higher. Keep in mind, I microdose mushrooms every morning, sometimes as much as half a gram. So I have a tolerance from literally doing mushrooms every day, and it still hit me like a goddamn freight train. I mean, maybe it's a good thing. You could argue I did have a bit of the blue goba, which is very, very potent. Maybe that really threw things off. Who knows? We'll have to do another video where I just eat the blue goba one on its own. But yeah, seven hours later, and I'm only just now, like, pretty much back. That lasted a long time. For me, mushrooms, usually three to four hours are, like, done. That felt like the trip that would never end. Whew. I'm assuming you guys want to know what happened. Some of these experiences are, like... They're really hard to put into words, especially right after you've come down. I will say that there was a solid portion of it where I felt like... Oh man, this one this one went all over. Like it, it actually started off really positive and warm. Like the initial vibes were just really warm and loving and and there was like no fear. But then that transitioned, I went from that to like a kind of scary place, which I'm used to. These experiences, they always do that transition for me. And I just kind of faced the fear. I mean, I didn't take a trip killer. <laughs> this, there was points where I was tempted though. Holy smokes, was I tempted. Yeah, it made me face what just felt like fear itself. I felt like... um. I was being exercised, like there was an exorcism going on and it was subtracting this demon from me that is the demon being my addictive tendencies, probably because I went into it with the intent of, yeah, like let's crush some addictions and um, it actually felt like an exorcism. If it was effective or not, I'm yet to say, but it felt like there was at points like my personality split into two parts. Keep in mind, like I'm just breathing through it, like the... All I'm focusing on this entire time is my breath. I could barely move. Anytime I'd get up, to move even I even changed my shirt at one point just getting up like lifting up to change my shirt the energy of doing that made me feel like I was gonna almost vomit like this entire experience was uh, peppered with intense nausea the nausea is going to be increased with um, potency or dose and considering there's no way that was just three grams yeah the nausea makes sense so just keep in mind I couldn't really move I really just was focused on laying as still as possible to be as least nauseous as possible because uh, the nausea, I find, can be really intense. It can throw off the experience, especially um, if it's coming on during like the height of being in those, for lack of a better term, hallucinatory states. When the dose is that high, you spend, I spend a lot of time being in like this uh, waking delirium type dream, dissociative delirium states, mind you, where it's like you feel like your personality, they feel like their personality is split apart, like I said, into multiple facets, and uh, they're not just one being anymore. And I think that can be very healing because it can show you very blatantly in like literal terms, the different aspects of yourself. There was another part of this this experience when I was laying there just observing things where I saw some, um, some people that came into my life recently that wanted to be um, friends. And I saw just how horribly unhealthy those people were. And it was almost like the mushrooms were um, looking out for me. And they were like, like, Adam, take a step back. You're not thinking straight here. These are not people you wanna be friends with. Look at all of these red flags they've displayed to you that you just kind of passed, you know, let, let slide by probably because you were in Kratom at the time and you weren't cognizant enough to realize that they were showcasing some uh, personality traits that you do not want to be associated with. And I was like, oh, thank you. All right, I'm gonna take a step back and uh, not follow through there. It's fascinating that the mushroom can show you that. Very grateful that it showed me that. See, these experiences often feel like the mushroom is its own entity. I like how they put it in the the, the Paul Stamets video, the fantastic fungi, where the woman's talking about, uh, she asked the mushroom during the experience if she was at least gonna leave the at least as strong as she started, and the mushroom was like, why would I disrespect my own handiwork? I like to look at it like that. Um, that makes it feel at least a little more forgiving and uh, like it's got your back, like it's got this autonomy about it where it, it wants to, you know, it wants what's best for you. So yeah, I like to look at it like it's a guide, like it's a protector, and uh, maybe just having that intent put forth is enough 
to influence the experience in a positive direction because on the flip side i've looked at it as if it was like an evil thing and causing me to like rip apart into multiple hallucinatory states of terror and when i saw it as like like an evil entity the experience felt more evil so i feel like this is where intent is huge and how we choose we what perspective we choose to view them from greatly either inhibits the potential for growth that can come out of the experience or entices it so there's that that's huge that's huge it's interesting making a video as like the effects are coming down and i'm almost fully cognizant like like i've got my rational mind and my wits are coming back slowly but surely and i'm able to articulate these thoughts in a way that uh if i were to say wait till tomorrow to film this they wouldn't be as fresh so i think this is the perfect time to be breaking down the experience i just had you know as much of it as i'm able to break down because there are some parts that i'm still um registering but yeah i wanted to explain a bit of the roller coaster aspect of like jumping between blissful states and terror so for this experience the beginning was very much so painted with bliss it, it was awesome very warm pretty much dmt i don't know how else to say it it was dmt but they're like insanely similar molecule maybe that denotes for the experience being like su such akin to one another but molecule similarities aside the visuals the vibe especially as you're like about to break through everything except the sound i would say is on par so the first part of this experience um was pretty much the same as if i smoked probably 30 40 milligrams of dmt the only difference was the mushrooms lasted longer that was overstaying its welcome like i i kind of wanted it to stop because uh then the blissful warmth faded and uh, the next stage i was in was this like weird in between i felt like really low and depressed but i couldn't put my finger on why like there wasn't a singular overarching negative theme that was tugging me down you know that was like pulling me beneath the surface so i had to like gasp for breath but it, but it felt like i was <gasps> like having um a hard time catching my breath um but that was that wasn't even playing into it because i had a hard time catching my breath even during the blissful states so and no that wasn't it it was just like like i felt low and i didn't know why and i think this is when i was experiencing the personality breaking apart into uh few different fractals of itself it just it's weird how it was accompanied by a very depressed vibe it reminded me almost of like the next day when you're coming down off mdma and you just you feel empty and, and you have the feeling like you don't know why you're sad but it feels like there's absolutely nothing to look forward to or to live to for in the world like that serotonin depletion dopamine depletion vibe that's what it felt like it, it i've never had that before not so close and so tied in with like the good feeling so to transition from feeling good to just that miserable was fucking weird and i gotta make sure that camera's on all right we're still recording oh, oh i feel i've been feeling very exhausted and it's um it's interesting i'm starting to get my energy back now like uh like basically literally the past seven hours i've been laying down but it's like when i finally got up i didn't feel like i'm rested like you know what i mean it's not like i've been asleep for seven hours because i haven't it's been in this weird in-between state maybe the last hour actually yeah i think the last hour i might have actually been asleep which i greatly needed um so it was really like six hours long but i i woke I got up feeling like I just want to go back the fuck to bed. <sighs> this is why the ex experiences midday are uh, they're tough to have because it's 5.43 p.m. But it's like I, I feel like I'm going to have absolutely no trouble sleeping because I could go to sleep right now. It's like I'm mentally and physically exhausted. Getting sustenance from peanut butter as if I haven't had enough fat sources today from that chocolate. God damn it. This is the worst kind of peanut butter. It's filled with hydrogenated oil. I usually eat organic peanut butter, but like... When the craving strikes, baby. Anyway, tell me about mushrooms and peanut butter. They're just like intertwined, man. Mm, just missing that banana. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't really define why I felt so low, but I felt really freaking low, and that was hard to witness during that state. I almost reached for the trip killer. No word of a lie, because while I was in that low state, the uh, the DMT esque experience of breaking through to the other side started to reach its climax. So it's not like things calmed down and then I started feeling low. Like it was an afterthought. Like okay, now the intensity's faded and now you're you know you've been deprived of the feel good chemicals. No, no, no. The intensity was still rising. As it was rising, my mood went from jolly to sad. So that sucked, and that lasted like a solid hour. Which in that state, when you're about to smash through to the alien dimension, oh man, an hour is, uh, um, yeah, I'm real proud of myself for not reaching for the trip killer. Like I almost did, but I just like, 
I thought, you know, I can do this. Like, what's the worst that can happen? I, I have a full on breakthrough. Actually empowering because it showed me that even if I'm fucking miserable, mid trip, heightened, exaggerated feelings, I can breathe through it on my own. I'm grateful for that. See, you can flip all these things and, and extract some positives from them. But yeah, so it moved from that. And, and then it just kind of got worse for a while. It was like this delirium, like I said, experience where I was seeing different parts of my personality. And then things got like, they, they went into real delirium. See, I'd get up and then like, you know, t go pee or something, drink a sip of water and then lay down. After I'd lay back down, it would feel like I was getting up and, and repeating, like I was in a loop, but I was aware that it was just in my mind. Like I actually had the wherewithal to separate that it was imagined, where in the past, I'd have no way to separate whether my mind was creating the loop or whether I was actually just, you know, repeating myself, like actually getting up and doing the same thing over and over again, which is what you define as the loops. So it's interesting um, being in the loop state, but being aware that it was just my mind creating it. And it was far less scary that way. I feel like learning how to meditate allowed me to observe the loops from that uh, retracted viewpoint. And what's interesting is this phase is also accompanied by a lot of chaotic thoughts. And by chaotic thoughts, I mean things you don't understand. It's so hard to explain because you can't make sense of it. It's like, imagine you're talking to a, a lamppost in your mind and like you're having sentences, but the sentences are made of bricks. Like it makes literally no sense. And uh, I was going through some deliriant states like that. Like, you know, talking to lampposts, baby. Fucking walking through Narnia. Foothills of snow. Meeting some minotaurs. Just really weird shit. And I was just really observing it. And um, it was really fascinating to take that retracted view where I wasn't just immersed in it. I was actually like observing kind of like from a distance. And uh, that was also empowering because that showed me that I don't need to fall victim to my thoughts. You know, feel like I'm the prey of my own fearful mind because there was a lot of fearful thoughts. Like when I was having the views of like the negative people in my lives, like it was injected with some serious paranoia where I was um, thinking about like just all kinds of bad shit that can happen to you. Like, like nightmare, horror story, bad shit. But in the past where I would be so terrified of this, again, I was kind of just like aware of the fear, but not attached to it, you know? It was really interesting. As someone who's like still dealing with like their kratom addiction, um, I figured I was still super mentally unhealthy, but clearly some of the stuff I've been doing has been working. Like maybe I think I'm so worse off, but I'm not. Like maybe I'm mentally so much, I think I am so much stronger than I realize. And I don't give myself enough credit because I'm always like nitpicking and finding these like little things I'm still doing. Like in my head, I'm like, you're doing such a terrible thing. You need to be perfect. But like really, well, there are those few things that I'm doing that suck, that are honestly shitty. I'm not justifying them my mind has grown in experience points and I'm gotten so much stronger in many ways that um, I'm very grateful for. It feels like real progress. And I find like if you can be arrogant and you can think that you're strong and you can handle all this stuff, but it's like having a trip is the great equalizer because it abolishes the ego and it puts you in the state where you're like, you got to face your shit. So if you've been lying about your strength, oh, it's going to come. It's going to shine through real fast, baby. And uh, a lot of people, I think, are afraid of tripping because, like, you know, they're, first of all, they're, there's multiple reasons. They're afraid of the unexpected. They're afraid of what they don't know. They don't know what could happen. And they read all these horror stories, and it's like they're just terrified that something real negative is going to happen, and they won't be the same after. If you trust yourself, like, if you deeply trust who you are and your capability to, you know, work through adversity, then you would trust that, yeah, it might be scary, but I'm going to be okay. And I feel like it really shines a light on um, the people who still have some insecurities that they haven't dealt with. And I'm not calling anybody out here. I'm not pointing any fingers um, because I know for sure I have my own insecurities I need to get through. But it's like um, I have some friends who are terrified to trip. And some of them have, have tripped and they had some bad experiences and they're terrified to face it again. Uh, I feel like once you get blown off that horse, you got to get back on. Because I've been in that stage of being absolutely terrified to do it. And I'm grateful that I, you know, face those fears. And sometimes facing the fears isn't necessarily tripping again. That's, that's the worst thing you can do. Like, like you want to sit back and, like, figure out what freaked you out. And I'm going to go off on a horrible tangent here that we're going we're gonna to cut this thread immediately because it's going to go way far off base. But, yeah, the psychedelics can really show you what your insecurities still are and where you've gotten stronger versus what you still need to work on. 
I moved from those like the fever dream. Um, it's, it's actually really negative. Like honestly, most of this experience was bad. <laughs> it was really just feeling positive in the beginning until I got hit with maybe the like the daily withdrawal that I'm not aware of consciously, but I was now. And then it was like everything just sucked. And then I went from that to just feeling really nauseous, tried to pee, tried to drink some water. Every time I got up, I was like, oh. And then I was just like in this weird, um, this state where it felt like uh, whatever this guardian thing is, was just showing me all of this shit. And it really felt like, um, like tough love. Like that whole experience, honestly, was tough love. So I'm down here smiling. I'm just extracting the positives from that, baby. Uh, there's also a party that's like happy that you made it through it and it's over. There's this empowering feeling, especially when you don't take the trip killer and you're like, oh, I pushed, that, that was horrible and I pushed through. It's like, by no means am I over here saying that that was a great experience. 85% of that sucked ass. <laughs> it wasn't fun. There's no part of me that would be like, yeah, I want to do that again. That was fun. No. This is why, for me, LSD is my jam. Like, LSD is like, wow, most of it is good, right? Like, there's always that part that isn't good, but most of it is good. With that, it was like, most of it sucked, but it was like, I need, like I said, you get the trip you need, not the one you want. I needed that because it showed me my strength. It was empowering in its shittiness. Um, I'm sure more of it's going to come to me, but this video has gone on long enough. Let's actually just, let's cut this short for now because, uh, I need to go make a tea. I, I feel dehydrated. I need some water. Enough of the peanut butter, baby. I, I need to you know, get some exercise. So you got to go for a walk before bedtime. And uh, yeah, let's wrap this thing up. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Let me know below what you thought of it. If you want more videos like this, and if you haven't already, make sure you visit psychsubstance.shop and pick up the limited edition black and pink trip blanket. I will admit that I had that thing snuggled close the entire experience and I do not regret it. Anyway, till next time, guys, I love you all. And uh, yeah, this was a ride and a half. I hope you guys enjoyed. You know, I hope you can learn something from this. And I hope I made it clear that that was fucking terrifying. And I'm happy it's over. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely not promoting any kind of substance use with this. If anything, I'm showing you just how scary these experiences can be. And just how like strong, you, how much mental fortitude you need to make it through them. I have cultivated the strength over years. Take care, guys. I love you and cheers. <laughs>